Hello, welcome to Design Time. I'm Jackie Lacey. We're continuing our look and um, special design times that are based around the elements and principles of design for those that are possibly testing at the, the AIFD National Symposium in Las Vegas this year, or maybe you're entering a competition um, this year, or just want to brush up on those elements and principles. This is our third in the series. We have also talked about what testing is like with Sandy Shrek last week so we actually have four videos that you can concentrate on. Today we're going to continue on one of the elements of design known as form. I believe it is second only to line um, and incredibly important that you focus on what your form is and knowing specifically from beginning to end that everything you do reinforces that form. Remember, form is the shape of your overall composition or an individual component. So it can be the shape of what you're adding in or the overall combination of the entire composition. It is in the um, Floral Bible, the AIFD Guide to Floral Design, a page about 95, 99, somewhere around in there, is the definition of form and will give you a more explicit uh, breakdown of exactly what you want to keep up with. There's also a page on geometric shapes that might help you refresh your memory of, for instance, what a conical shape is, or um, elongated, horizontal, vertical. Make sure that you know those individual forms in the event you should be required or asked during certification or competition to create a specific form. Now, as I said, I think line is one of the most important um, uh, elements, and it's usually where I start, and I try to use line to set my form. And what I mean by that is we're starting with a square piece of foam in a square container. Most of the time, because your brain is going to tell you it's square, everything you do, you want to stay there. But as designers, we like to color outside the lines, and sometimes we'll take that square shape and we're going to do a round design in the square shape. We might do a horizontal, we might do a vertical. Whatever the case may be, the container becomes part of the composition. So make sure that everything you do reinforces, as I said, what you want that finished composition to be. For instance, what I'm talking about is when I first start, I am going to set my form by setting sort of a, an area that tells me I want everything to be this high, I want it to be this wide, I want it to go in this direction, so that when we look at that, we know right away that we are dealing with a round, a square, an oblong, a horizontal, whatever the case may be. We're also trying to keep in mind that we want to make sure our mechanics are unquestionable. You want to make sure that each and every area that you can look into that design, that the foam is covered. You don't see any of your mechanics. So really all I'm doing is layering in, and we're using Baker Fern or Leather Leaf, whichever you like to, to uh, refer to it as, to set our basic shape. Now I've not completely filled that in, but I want you to just get the idea of what we're looking at. I have rounded out the greenery as I've put it in there, the foliage, to create a round base in a square form. That's perfectly all right, but everything I would do from this point forward, we want to drive that this is going to be a round arrangement. So if we continued maybe with some foliage like this, I'm going to place it in an area where that is easy to see that my intentions with this particular foliage is to keep this round. Easy as that. Everything I start to put in, as I put in my floral product, I would place it in a position where it's going to reinforce that form and remain in a round manner. For instance, if I wanted to do something maybe a little more, um, let's say, asymmetrical. Remember, the definition of an asymmetrical composition are, is a triangular-shaped design with three unequal sides. So you would place that where we're going to get the maximum 
definition of asymmetry. We have one side here, one side here, and another side there. Three unequal sides. Now everything else I put in there is going to reinforce that asymmetry. So no matter what you're looking at or how you're starting your composition, everything feeds off of everything else again to reinforce that form. Here I am sort of setting some parameters so that my design is going to be very vertical. We can see that already. Even though we had a beginning of a round design in a square container, now we've turned it into a rectangle. Are you starting to see some of the way things can work in there? Now as we begin to add in the other foliages, to the list or to our design, we can see how easily it is to continue to reinforce that form in the manner in which we add in those additional pieces. We're still very vertical, but if we wanted to push this now to an asymmetrical design, you can see how easy that would be. You want to make sure that you don't leave it up to the viewer or the evaluator, the judge, whatever the case may be, to decide what your intentions are. Make sure that your insertions are done in such a way that there is no question that the form you are setting forth is such And there's, it's easy to see exactly what that is. Again, we've added another layer, but it's all reinforcing that we have a very vertical design, still could go in an asymmetrical shape, so you don't want to leave that question. The last products that you begin to add, which would be your floral product, wants to decide whether that is asymmetrical or vertical. You might take these out. And now everything else that remains in there can be added in to keep it very vertical. Easy as that. Just don't leave a question on the table. As we look at some of the pieces I've got here, we can see this was a heart-shaped design that was created by Sandy Shrek last week when she was here. We've added in some of those beautiful lily grass roses as our vocal area and the other foliage that we added in all keeps that heart shape going. Square glass container, lots of movement and direction in this particular piece. Even though this is rounded, our insertions that we added in would probably be done such that the finished composition would indeed be a round design. In building something like this, if we want to be able to control it and make sure that there's no question as to what our intentions were, it's going to be more in how we start to layer in those products because you can see now I've taken this round container and I'm starting to extend it this way. So it may become horizontal, it may become um, asymmetrical really up to the designer that's as they're doing it. It's just that everything else that goes in there is going to need to support what your final position is for that composition. Remember, use line to set your form. Set your height, your width, your depth, whatever the case may be, you're creating those lines that you're going to design within. Don't leave a question on the table. Focus on what the form is when it starts and what you want it to be when it finishes. I hope you'll continue to join us for our Elements and Principles Design Time Specials over the next several weeks, trying to help prepare everyone for National Symposium in Las Vegas this year in July, and all those people that are entering competitions during the year. Good luck to each and every one of you. We hope this helps. Don't hesitate if you have a question. Be sure and touch base with us on our Facebook. Ask those questions. If you would like to see something specifically, don't be afraid to reach out and say, how do I do this? What, how do I set this? Or whatever the question you may have um, comes across. 
Join us again for design time. If you enjoyed that video and you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button.